within their local systems. So whatever system that they have in place, for example, I've heard several things mentioned about teacher evaluation or principal evaluation. That's very much a local, a local decision. So we're, but what we're helping you to do is to get you that data back to you so that you can use it within your local context, not from the, from the state side to make those decisions for you, but right back to, to the local, to the local yeah. level. See, and you and Lori have that level of excitement and enthusiasm and great. Could we get them to feel that way? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Do we need to drive by every day with whoo whoo? <laughs> so it's not about partnerships with uh, with very drug company numbers. <laughs> no, yeah. No, you're, but you're absolutely right. And but this is but. You know, I'm, I'm having very much of a, an epiphany here, but you're absolutely right because we get jazzed about it. But why do we get jazzed about it? Because we see, we see it. You know, it's like the whole we've been on the mountaintop and seen. You know, we're, we got, but we got to change. We have to communicate that out in a way so that they feel the same thing. And so you're right on target. Right on target. Yeah. Yeah, so you said to the degree that they can feel empowered. You got it. Yeah, because what we're trying to give them tools that they've never had right in their hands so they can transform. Again, it's that whole concept of education transform. We're trying to help them move the needle. And so we're, we're really, so we're doing this, and it's a lot of, but we got to communicate the amount of effort that it's taken us to get there and the amount of effort that it's going to continue to take. But so we can, so we can have that, that shift in thinking, because it is a culture shift. because this change for that school really places a burden on our vendors and also our STC people. Yep, no, that's a tremendous deal. You know, and we've been mindful of, of stuff like this before, where we, you know, we're raring to go, and then we got feedback and said, you know what, you know, we gotta, we got to manage expectations here a little bit. We agree that this is the end point where we got to get to, but is there another way we can get from point A to B that's going to be less impactful to folks in the field, but we're keeping the same intent? And so, yeah, we're definitely taking that, that feedback. Uh, part of what our, the team's been doing and having conversations with, with some of you uh, offline and also with vendors just to try to get a sense of, all right, is this just a totally crazy ask or is this something that's doable but with X amount of pain or is this something that's relatively easy to help us get a, get a sense of what the impact is to the field. And so like Lori said, this is the thinking. You have a sense of why we're trying to get there. And so to the degree that, we, that we're having that conversation about how we can get to point A to B and what that might look like over the course of this year, yeah, absolutely, we're gonna take that into account. Well, my concern is we've already started the school year and nobody is aware of this change until now. Yet it's almost time to report 40 a totally day. understand. a lot of groups to communicate with Totally understand. Is, and yep. it's more philosophical. I, I'm sure the vendors can make it happen because they're just that magical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, it's not about them. <laughs> it's really about all the other people we've been talking about and the philosophical part of absolutely change in practice. Yeah. Grade. Yeah. Yep. No, we're again we're, we we definitely value the feedback and we're going to take it into account for sure. So yep. all the data that we gave you last year, how are you giving that back to? Uh, actually, right now through SLEDS. And so we have a uh, 11 LEAs that are, or 10 LEAs, 11, that are currently piloting the SLEDS dashboards that you saw some screenshots from, so from adjunct. Back to us During the course of this year, we're committed to rolling out to a, a minimum of 200 LEAs yep. over the course of this year. 200. To the degree that we can go beyond that, we're committed to doing that as well. And so we're part of what the the pilot has been working with is working directly with those educators to, to see, okay, here, here's, does the look feel right? Are you seeing the data that you want to see and the way you want to see it to help inform your instruction? We did a pilot over the summer so that we could get feedback on how, how do these data, if you were to have it in the summer, how does it help you plan for the year? 
how, as an administrator, how does it help you as, uh, assign students to courses, or to, to teachers, rather? Um, and we wanted to get that real-world, actionable feedback. And so those folks have been working real hard to, to build out and, and those, that, those dashboards so that we feel like they're going to really be effective for folks. And now this year is our, our big kickoff. And we're going to roll it out, again, to a minimum of 200 LEAs over the course of the year. And if we can do more, we absolutely will. And then it's, you know, 100%, you know, after that. How do you know if you can be one of those 200 people? You'll know very shortly. Uh, <laughs> we're working. We've just, we've just begun working with, with the teams that are involved with this, that include the identity management folks, ADE Connect. That includes the longitudinal data system team. That includes the student teacher course connection team. So all of those folks have been coming together uh, over this past week or two weeks to come up with what that rollout plan is. And we're looking at what's the best way that because one of the first things that were said also is that why can't we do everybody all at once? Um, so well, we gotta you know we have to make sure that it's one thing to provide, and this has been. Um, probably the trickiest bit, and this might be given away too much, but, but the trickiest bit is, it's, it's somewhat easy just to say, turn it on, here we go. It's a whole other thing to be able to train folks to say, okay, how do I actually use this, you know, to inform and serve? How do I actually use this as an administrator? You know, how can I apply this, you know, and change practice? Because we've all seen tools that have kind of popped up and say, here you go, and then if, if that second piece isn't there, it never gets opened again, or it doesn't get used again. We're trying to learn from some of those things that we've done in the past. And we want to make sure that as we're rolling out, that we're supporting folks with training and technical assistance and support so that this stuff is actually being used you know, in the classroom. So if it's not used, I mean, you know, we want to, and, we, and that's the value, again, all the work that's, got it, that's been put in by, many, by all of you here to help get us to that point. And so that's why we were talking about that rollout, a minimum of 200. You know, the nut to crack to go beyond that is make sure we can support folks effectively. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass it right back to Lori. Yes, ma'am. right now um, but it was we, we figured out why that happened we hadn't officially closed like the uh, 20 what are we in right now we're 14 right uh, 2014 uh, tw we hadn't officially done closed 2013 submissions we had one big uh, system that was having some problems that we wanted to give the opportunity to be able to submit and get their processes whatnot so what it was doing was it was reading SACE data from last year based on the submissions that you had submitted. Yeah. And so people right now, if you're submitting, but we closed it. So if you have that warning, um, just please ignore it. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. It was revalidated. Yeah. But it was that um, kids, kids, students, and teachers students that had already graduated wasn't fighting them on SACE, so you're getting SACE error. Or warnings, it was a warning, and then HQT, it was teachers, prior teachers, you were getting a warning that they're not on your roster. But so just hit the revalidate button, revalidate your trial, and those should go away. So they were warnings, they weren't errors. If I said errors earlier, I apologize, but they're warnings. So, but I know you guys, you're using those warnings and, and errors and whatnot. I've heard it, so that's a good thing. So, yes, ma'am. Question is, uh, does ADE plan to use pre-K uh, data and roster? Peter, yes, no. Just yes or no. <laughs> I'm teasing, I'm teasing, forgive me. I'm teasing, here you go. No, you're not, you, <laughs> it's dangerous to hand me a mic. Um, about uh, preschool, right now, no. Um, but in terms of the larger picture out there, I'm sure you've heard the term of first was K-12, then they talked about K-16, then they talked about K-20, then they talked about P-20, 
And then they talked about P20W for workforce. And on that larger roadmap of, of where folks would like to be able to have, be able to see that educational progress, I know there's some initial conversations that are happening with First Things First about ways that we can look at that kids before they come into our system. And an agree that we can empower teachers or schools with more information when kids come in on readiness, you know, that that, that, that helps. But, but right now, in terms of like a specific collection for preschool, it's, it's not on, on our immediate right now. He knows I'm kidding him. Peter's always a good one to have some good conversations with. He's very knowledgeable and smart. He's a deep thinker. Oh, that was fun. Just do this. Get rid of it for a while. We'll figure it out. We had great conversations, and, and the biggest thing I took out of that is the communication piece. So um, thank you very much. That means a lot to me because um, we've got some transitions going on, and your feedback with that is will be incredibly important to me. So I might just be calling you up. Um, just really quickly, CTE programs, uh, we have a very good relationship with Jan Bright and her folks at ADE and the CTE folks. They had two programs that changed, I don't know if you're aware of it. Um, they had, initially they had um, communications media, no wait, excuse me, multimedia technologies and graphic communications as two separate with two separate zip codes. But now what they did was they kind of melded those programs into one program and changed the zip codes. Um, Jan Bright and I worked together, her staff and her specialists on each one of those program areas um, rewrote some descriptions and for the courses and assigned new zip codes. I just got that back about two weeks ago and I was able to input those into CourseWalk. I was telling you that earlier. And so now there's new zip codes assigned to new state course codes. So please take the time if you are a CTE school that offers those two programs to make sure that you update. I'll send this to all of you guys, okay? And I'll also send it to Nancy. It'll be posted on Ask Us and it will also be posted on our website. So don't try to hurriedly write, okay? Just to let you know. Make sure, just make sure that you get those course codes changed, you guys, before your 40th day submissions. Otherwise, you're stuck with those old codes. Okay, and we don't want to do that. Um, there is a new course import template, so if you have to import new courses because your school has um, added some courses or changed some courses in CourseWalk itself, the template changed just minorly, but if you try to upload some courses using the old template, it'll throw an error for you. Just contact us, we'll work with you. I'm working really heavily with Phoenix Union right now on trying to help them out as well. So just. Don't make that an issue for you, please. We'll, we'll, we'll help you. What? Sorry, Nancy. Um, oh, and also last year, Performing Arts and Entertainment, not all of their courses had an Arizona State course code, so you kind of had to pick. Well, um, they now have Arizona State course codes attached to them. So if you have any of that program, the Performing Arts and Entertainment Industry program, you now have state course codes. I please, I encourage you to go in and take a peek. If you need help, let me know. New catalog is on the website. Any questions about catalog? <laughs> We've got some teams transition here with STC. And it means a lot to me to hear the communication that we had because that's where I'll be focusing on um, some, some of my communication as well as re retaining my relationship to you. The big A-list product rollout, I'm moving to that one and trying to work and get it out there like we did with STC. Um, that's the ADE Connect, the SLED, and some of the opt-in products that are coming out. So now you know why it was very important for me to really listen to what you said about all of this stuff. It really it makes a difference. Um, Sarah Mahoney will be moving into my role for STC. I will not be leaving STC yet because I feel like my foot's in the grave in there. You know, I don't want to leave completely, but I just want you to know that I'm moving on to be able to help the whole thing um, happen. And so, um, anyway, just wanted to tell you that. I'm not out yet. I probably have to claw me out, but. Um, 
So let me talk to you a little bit. I'm still learning. Uh, this is all thrown to me a couple weeks ago, and I've been frantically learning. I've cried a few tears over trying to figure out, well, what is ADE Connect, and how does it fit in, and whatnot. I don't know have all the I don't have all the answers yet. I'll be very honest. I feel like the dumbest person that's walking the planet right now because I have no clue. Um, every day I'm asking a jillion questions, finding the right people to talk to. Um, we're gonna have to work with the vendors, and I know there's different vendors. Like Dan, I don't think you're on that project, right? Yeah. Um, not yeah, not at all yet. Yeah. So anyway, there's a lot to learn. Um, Really, they talked a little bit about ADE um, Connect to you. It's really more of a single sign-on. What it will eventually do is replace Common Logon. Right now, Common Logon, you have um, all your programs, right, that you need, like, and you have to ask for permission, and then we grant it to you and whatnot. Just like Ed said, it's more you guys manage it. Right now, ADE is kind of exposed. And I want you to just think about something. If Bill here leaves school, he still has his ADE common log on unless your school or district lets ADE know to shut it off, right? <laughs> That's scary. So what we're doing is moving away from that. And as Ed said, you own it. You guys own it, whoever has it. So when you shut them off of your student information system because Bill's left, we don't want you to leave Bill. But if you shut Bill off at your student information system, it shuts Bill off from all the other things that he has to, uh, that he would see via ADE, or, you know, common log on or whatnot, right? Make sense? It eliminates the need for, you know, 50 bajillion passwords that you have to remember. Sarah's funny. She's, Sarah has a notebook on her desk where she keeps all of her passwords. I love it. <laughs> Sorry, I just told on you. I love it, but the, it's the truth. Does anybody else have a notebook where they keep their stuff? Okay, yeah, it's ridiculous. So, um, so what? A, so here's the way that it's going to work, as best as I see it, and this is only coming to my brain. But what happens is we have to get you guys plugged into ADE Connect. That'll happen through your vendor, or right now until your vendor can catch up, it'll we'll make it happen for you. Okay. That opens the door to oh, all the other stuff. Um, and so our first step, me and you, and whoever it needs to be, I'm not for sure, I haven't even decided what the attack is yet. We have to get this going for each one of your schools. Because if not, you're gonna be left out and you won't be able to see the SLEDs, uh, dashboards, you won't be able to see common log on uh, applications that are moving over there and whatnot, you'll be shut out. So it is, it is vital that we get you moved over to this, okay? Um, and really, it's kind of a triangular approach, you know? This will be me and the folks here at ADE that'll work with you to say, hey, we've got to make sure that you guys are on board. Who are the people to talk to? What do we need to do? I'll have to work with very closely with the vendors to say, is the solution ready? What do they need to do? How do they get signed on? So on and so forth. And then you'll have to work also with your vendor to make sure it happens. So it's kind of, if you will, it's not any different really than what we had to do last year together, right? STC, we had to do all of this together. So this is the first step in making all of the data come to life and all of the products. I'll take questions. I, I don't have any specifics, but if you have an ADE Connect question, yes, ma'am? Is this going to include HR titles that any, anybody that would log into ADE? Yes. Okay. Yes. She asked if this is uh, include more, the, what are the roles? Right now, I believe there are seven roles. I don't know them off the top of my head. I apologize. What are the roles? Right now, I believe there are seven roles. I don't know them off the top of my head. I apologize. But the ones I do know are like an entity admin. A, I don't know what I, they all mean yet, I'm still getting the definitions. Entity admin, district admin, school admin, uh, teacher, HR, counselor, and I, that's what they have thus far. And what? Yeah, that, that's on one of the pilots, right? Yeah. They're coming. They're coming. Yeah. 
So see, see, I don't know what I don't know yet. <laughs> it's two years in a row I didn't know what I don't know. Move on when reading. Yep. That, well, I was, that's why I was just going to tell you. Um, right now, this is kind of the way it looks from what I understand. I'm getting a training early next week on it. I'll be able to tell you more. But here are some of the programs that are currently on there. Move on when reading. Um, this one is, I'm not for sure exactly what this is, ADE reporting. But I do know there is a report that's going to be thrown on there very soon, actually in the end of, what are we in right now, September? I think it's the first of November it'll be thrown on and it's um, the Arizona Board of Regents High School something. <laughs> I apologize. I don't mean to take this lightly. I just, I, I don't know. But it's a, it's a Arizona Board of Regents report that all high schools will get because you get it already anyway. But now to display it and to see it and to view it, it will be on this level. Um, the SLEDS environment and grants management have already been moved over. Oh, this is this? Oh, that's right. Thank you. It's uh, We have two interfaces. We're in a transition on the uh, SLEDS interface right now, and I believe they are still making the old one available until the new one, that we can like shut the old one off and turn the new one on. Yes, ma'am. Um, is there like, please, thank you. Is there like a listing of like the role types and what they can, I mean, is it that defined? Because our NC administrator came to me yesterday and said, ask tomorrow and ask us, because she asked me and I'm like, oh, I don't have no idea. But she's like, I'm entity administrator, but then I also gave my permission, me permissions for move on when bringing in grants management, but now my grants management is not working and I can't do this and I can't do that. And I'm like, it sounds like a hierarchy thing, but. It is very hierarchy. Hier you know what I meant. It's very, um, that word in nature. Um, but but I don't know. That's what I. That's why I said just a moment ago there are seven roles. I don't have the full picture of what those are, and just kind of like the email. You know, I can get the email, but right now opening it and comprehending it and being able to speak it back to you, you know, I can't do just yet. But I'm telling you what I know. Rose, Rose mask. But yes, there are. Uh, they're clearly defined. Yes. I don't know. The question was elite. What I am pushing for, just to let you know, I said, well, you know what, if we roll this out, it's going to be really important to folks to know what's the phase one programs that are going to be on, on uh, ADE Connect. And what's the phase two? What's coming? What can we expect when, which program uh, stuff is going to be on ADE Connect? And then what's coming next? And then what's coming next? And so, um, they haven't been able to answer that question yet. And so what I'd like to do is kind of take that challenge on and see if I can get something out there that, okay, when are you planning on moving your stuff over? You know, so you guys have an idea. It's that communication. So right now they don't know. But eventually common log on will go away. That's what I do know. Why is this bothering me? So, yes ma'am. No, please. I heard that we should put elite and STC up there and the curriculum people will have a whoop whoop party. Yeah, maybe so. I'm good at running around and trying to figure things out and talk to people, so. Anyway, that's all I know about ADE Connect at this moment. Any other questions, high level? Please don't ask me specifics, I'll tell you I don't know. Uh, and then, you know, obviously, once you have ADE Connect, I don't wanna, I don't wanna you know, beat sleds into the ground. It just seems like it's, it's like the fun, sexy stuff, right, of everything that we're doing. Um, some of this STC reporting, ADE Connect, gets us there. So, um, so I don't want to overemphasize, or not overemphasize, but over talk about it, but it's coming, you know, and it is part of this, as you can see right here. So your STC data, it will behoove us 
to get you on board as fast as we can to ADE Connect so you can start looking at that SLEDS data. And you can also say, see, this is what we're doing, which will help us answer some of those questions, right? Um, oh, I just wanted to let you know, here's some of the reports. I don't know if you know this yet, but here's all of the reports that are available right now with SLEDS. So take a look at these. And do you know what STC is driving all this? Do you know what part? Someone please say yes. How is STC driving this? Okay, wait, let's go with this one. How is STC driving this? What components, you guys know this, I know you do. What, is, what components of what you're submitting is visualized through this? What? I heard it. Rosters. That's why it's so important. Remember also last year when we were we were commiserating like how how do um, 